Hey, welcome to Poker Pals. Um, so today I'm going to talk about how I started my Pokemon singles selling business on Card Market. It will have a comparison to eBay and obviously a link to my Card Market shop at the end, but this is just a rough guide on to how I started my business using Card Market. So for anyone that knows me, which may not be a lot of you, but I have loved Pokemon since I was a kid. Um, I am a lot older than probably most of you. Um, so I remember when it first came out and, you know, it stems back to opening the original base packs. Jungle was one of my favorite sets from when I was younger. And then Team Rocket was like my absolute favorite. Um, remember pulling a dark right chew and just being blown away that this number 83 of 82 card existed, thinking that I'd been robbed or something had happened. And since then, like, it's just been a part of my life like ever since and I've just never been able to shake it. Kind of similar to everyone else, um, I sort of got back into it during lockdown. Um, I'd always been collecting but I just really got back into it during lockdown and started to just really start collecting hard. Um, I got like full sets of base set again and went all the way up to Neo, even had like a pretty much full complete Wizards of the Coast Black Star promo set, minus the two most expensive cards of course. But yeah, for me, I just got really hard into it and I sort of started to think, well, how could I make this work for me so that I'm essentially collecting for free? Now, it doesn't always work out like that and I have to admit, I probably got into it at a good time. so it's a bit harder for me to see how this would work in today's market, but obviously you can take the tips that I'm going to give you and you can try them and you never know, it may work out for you. So firstly, what is Card Market? So Card Market is a TCG specialist selling platform. So imagine eBay, but just trading cards. Um, the company is based in Germany. Um, so in order to get payouts in the UK, you will have to have a bank account which has an IBAN number. Um, but registration is super, sim super simple. I signed up as a, a, a professional seller, um, which required a bit more verification, but once done, it was on there nice and easy. Um, the benefits of card market is unlike eBay, um, in order to sell, you literally just have to select the conditions. So, and they are quite strict about conditions. So if you say something is near mint, it has to be near mint. So always like, go on the scuts of probability if you think that it may be lightly played or it may be good. Um, if it's off center, you can add comments. Obviously you can upload pictures as well, but um, to be honest, the majority of my sales have, have never been photographed. Um, I've literally just only ever sent pictures to people that have requested them, which has worked out really well for me. But obviously if you have fewer cards and you want to add pictures, then you might very well see like a higher tick in like sort of different card sales to me. Um, but so far I've found that I've probably only sent like close to about 25 pictures um, for the 767 sales I've made. Um, that's just overall sales, not items sold. So obviously most of those will have um, individual sales of like two, three, up to 10, 20 cards sometimes. So for me, card market was the best one. Uh, the fees are super reasonable um, and the payouts are like literally same day, if not next day, except on a weekend and a public holiday. Um, I've found that the support is a bit hit and miss. They've currently got a 12 day backlog, which they are working through. So if you do have any issues, it is quite difficult to sort of get a hold of them. But there is a really good, like unofficial, official Reddit page that basically has lots of people who ask questions and lots of people who even offer support. So when I was setting up my uh, seller account, again, super easy. You just need an IBAN number. If you're registered, you'll need your, um, you'll need your VAT and or your company's host thing. Um, and then that will get you all set up and that's nice and easy. So for me, the way it worked was I would start by bulk buying V cards. So they would be the minimum cards I would buy. Um, I didn't buy reverse hollows, common on common. Um, I did open a few packs and like any of the hits I got that I didn't want, I would then sell to then fuel cards that I did want. This would be really easy. I would buy the majority of the cards for anywhere between 80p to a pound each. I would buy between 50 and 100 at a time. Now, the markup on some of them was like making my money back. On some of them, I may have been making two pound a card, but you can kind of see where it starts to kind of trickle into each other. Now, I started my Pokemon card business with about 150 pounds. I bought... 25 VMAX and 100 Vs. 
Um, I started by selling them on eBay. I listed them. Um, I would also keep an eye on um, the card game and see what was um, doing really well in competitions. I would keep those cards out and essentially try and hold on to them to see when the regionals were coming, which obviously during lockdown was difficult. But but in 2022 and 2023, when the regionals came back, um, I then started to pay attention to the decks which had been winning. And then obviously those cards you could get for like 80p, but some of them were selling for like five, six pounds, even basic trainers. It was, it was, it was wild. And even that's still what I do to this day. So I keep an eye on what decks have been doing really well. And then I will keep the cards aside if I have them and then just keep an eye on the trends and see what's going. Cause again, you can buy a 50p card that could be worth like five pounds. Um, Forest Seal was a good example of that. Um, originally, people couldn't get rid of them. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it started doing really well in the meta and was being sold for like five, six pound a card. Same with Iono from uh, Paldia Evolved. Again, it was a bulk card which started doing really well. And in the current expansion of 151, uh, Grabber and Energy Sticker are two ones which are doing really, really well at the moment. So the one thing I found that was really important with Card Market was... Um, keeping on top of customer service and sending out in a timely manner. Now I found that the people on card market are generally more honest than eBay, uh, personal opinion. Um, when I sold on eBay, I found that the amount of missing parcels I had was probably quite high. Um, whereas on card market, I, out of the, again, 770 odd sales I've had now, only 11 parcels have gone missing and none of them were tracked. So, you know, it's just goes to show you that Sometimes I find that eBay has a different demographic, whereas people on card market are actual players and collectors. So they have a bit more respect for the individuals, I find. Um, even in communication with people when items have gone missing, everyone's been super friendly and super apologetic. And, you know, a lot of them have actually even kind of said, oh, I'm sorry that you're going to have to refund for this. But if it turns up, I'll, I'll send you the money back. But yeah, so the hardest part from like sort of doing that and then scaling was king was inventorying. Customer issues wasn't too hard. Um, I'm not the best at like making content and kind of advertising myself. So although I'm doing this now, this has been something that's been weeks and months in the planning that I finally just got around to doing because I kind of needed to do it. And I wanted to talk about it because I feel that, you know, if I can help people collect Pokemon cards essentially for free, why wouldn't I? So for me, my biggest seller has been 151. Um, I've literally hoovered up as many free packs as I could and I've opened all of them I've not been selling packs um, and I've been keeping the singles and selling them on card market and they have by far been my biggest seller um, today I've pulled 11 Sar Charizards um, and three reverse holo metapods which is unusual because yeah it's not a difficult card to obtain but or you so you would think but it's actually been harder for me to pull than a Charizard so since I've started selling 151, like my sales have been through the roof, um, even so far into the 4th of January when this was recorded, um, I'm still selling reverse holos, holos, um, trainer cards, like everything from that set. That's the one set that I've decided to not, um, to not restrict myself on what I'm selling. So I'm selling the 2P cards and some of the reverse holos are like picking up like some good cash. So it's definitely a good set to get involved in, especially because of the nostalgia and everything else kind of involved with it. So there's a couple of ways of getting suppliers. Um, I'll link to some of them down below. Um, some you don't need a VAT number, some you do. Um, and obviously that again, just depends on the complexity of the operation that you're running. I myself as a business am VAT registered, um, just because it makes it easier to um, sign up with big wholesalers just to make life easier. So the first wholesaler that I would recommend signing up to if you are VAT registered is Asmodee. Um, they are the biggest distributor. You will get everything for the actual um, below RRP cost price, which, you know, shops that you go to will get it from. They will supply your local gaming stores. They will supply, you know, your bigger companies. Like they, they supply everyone pretty much. And they are the ones that you would need to get in with. Um, again, Signing up to them isn't so straightforward. You have to have a website, you have to meet certain criteria. And again, you have to have a VAT number. So 
joining them is quite difficult but as long as you follow their process which they outline and they're really friendly and they're really helpful and you then have a person that deals with you and helps you order stuff and yeah they are really really good like once you sort of get through the process um i think you do have to make initial order of more than 700 pounds i can't remember it, it has changed since i've done it um the other companies are mudlet and plus marketing now these are two companies where you can buy booster boxes uh with including vat price and you get them for about 98 to 100 pounds so not like a huge saving and probably kind of similar to what you could get them on facebook groups but they are there they ship next day and it's the stock is like kind of always readily available um especially when it came to the new sets again like 151 and you know powdy effects which is coming up they've had plenty of stock going around of it so they've been really good to sort of keep an eye on and the other one I would recommend if you want to buy sort of singles, they are a bit more expensive, but they sell single booster boxes. I think the minimum order is like £400 or £200. Again, it varies, um, but it's Obsidia Trading. Um, they've been super helpful to me um, when it comes to being buying single booster packs. Um, again, I would order between two and 400 151 booster packs, would rip through them, sort them through. And so far, like using them, I haven't lost money. Um, but again, the price fluctuates depending on the market value. Um, so I think at their highest, they were 475 before VAT. And I think now they're down to 399 before VAT. So it still works out about 470 a pack. But, you know, with the scarcity of 151 at the moment, it's not actually that bad of a, a thing to get a hold of. So, yeah, so I've been doing this since about 2020. And in that time, I would say since I've joined Card Market, it has really gone off. Um, I would say that I'm doing... I don't know, probably between 20 to 60 orders a month, which might not sound a lot, but when the average order value is about £40, it's pretty good. And I find that the page itself is just so easy to use. The listing, you can do bulk listing if you have like full sets of stuff. Like when I was doing 151, I could literally put in the quantity of all of the cards I had, whether they were a reverse hollow, and then I could then set it to the average trend pace of seven days and it would then match what the card has sold for the last seven days, list it and let it go. Uh, card market deal with all the postage costs. So nobody gets free shipping. Uh, the only thing you can do is you can set it to track shipping only for everything, which is fine. But when somebody's ordering a 20p card, um, it generally kind of puts them off that they have to spend £2.25 to get po uh, posted tracking. The other thing I really like about card market is that anything that's over £20, not including postage, goes into like a goes into like a, a trusted um account essentially so you don't get the funds for that until um the customer has marked it as received and the customer has 14 days to mark that as received if they don't it then gets marked as received automatically and you then get the funds um the good thing about this though is it's not like a credit facility it is essentially just that they have charged the customer they are holding the money in like a holding fund once the customer then says yes i've got it then you pay out. This only ever happens on cards which are worth £20 and above, um, which require a tracked service. So I find with these ones, if you get them out same day on a 24 hour service, you know, which you can usually get for about £3.30 with track 24, um, you will usually have the money by the next day. And again, because of the kind of place that card market is, you will find that everyone is like super friendly helpful you know they they've, they know the process and they know that they've got to market as received um and the people that haven't done it automatically or haven't done it after a few days i find that if you just send them a message explaining hey i don't get the f the funds until you've marked it as received would you mind marking it as received and nine times out of ten people will be like oh god yeah i'm so sorry um and they'll mark it as received and then you withdraw the credits and then you have it in your bank the next day like honestly compared to ebay it's just phenomenal. I found that the the fees for card market are around 1.5 to 2%, whereas eBay's fees were, if you were promoting it, they would take a cut of postage. And yeah, I, I find that if I was selling a £10 card on eBay, I'd be lucky if I was clearing after postage £4. I just found that with promoting it, with the amount of people that were on there, and with the amount of issues that I had on eBay, you know, I sold nearly four or 5,000 things on eBay. Like, my feedback was 99.6%. You know, I did my best to, like, bend over backwards to help everyone. But I just found that, like, there was a, a few people that were just kind of taking advantage to how 
good eBay were at refunding people. Um, so for me, when I found Card Market, I was a bit skeptical. But as soon as I started building uh, traction, a lot of my customers are repeat. Um, and again, it's all pretty anonymous, so you don't get people's actual like email addresses and stuff. And it's just so much better. I just find that you know you can speak to people and I've had like tons of people come back and I even sell all my bulk common uncommon and trainer cards on there and I find that you know they go really quick I even sell bundles of Japanese VMAXs they go really quick like at the moment I've got I think three and a half thousand cards listed on there plus some boosters and everything else and it's just it's just a proper steady income of cards and as long as you keep it updated and as long as you keep an eye on it you can basically just tick it over and yeah and another thing i use is tcg power tools which is like a bulk automation tool for um card market once i started getting quite a lot of stock on there i found that it was really important for me to try and keep on top of pricing and inventorying um they have like an automated um pricing tool which you set the parameters on so for me like i don't want it to go anywhere below two percent so that way i'm not completely cannibalizing like all of my profits um, but what it will do is it will monitor the people and it will basically undercut a set like you basically set the conditions on who you want it to undercut and it will undercut them by 2%. So basically making sure that you're always at the top that you're always like fresh and on top and yeah TCG Power Tools has been really good they've got like a bulk import facility again if you want to import thousands of cards in the click of a button you can do it again really 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 enjoy using it. But yeah if you have any questions or if you want me to speak some more in detail about this, or if you want to know how to get started, let me know. I will put some links in the description uh, for you to look at uh, for TCG Power Tools, for Card Market, for My Card Market, um, and everything else. And yeah, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, please just leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Peace, guys. Bye.